Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. Big news, everybody. Battlestar Galactica Deadlock is going to get a conclusion to its Season 2 campaign, as announced by Slytherin and Black Lab Games, in the form of Battlestar Galactica Deadlock Armistice. All dealing with the fact of the Cylons losing their grip on the war. This concludes Season 2, but that is not all. A bit of a double whammy came out, as Slytherin and Black Lab also announced the Modern Ships Pack as well. That was going to come in uh, in conjunction with Armistice. However, this is going to have some ships, all from the modern Ron Moore Battlestar Galactica, which we know and love. Now, here's the thing. How's this going to affect gameplay? What's it all about? Well, let's find out. Yes, folks, we're back with a great real-time strategy game, Battlestar Galactica Deadlock, for the end of what has obviously been a horrible 2020. So good on you, Black Lab Games, and good on you, Slytherin Games, as well, for getting this released, just to give someone a little bit of Battlestar Galactica goodness uh, before the end of the year. I think we've all been waiting for it. So, what's this new... DLC all about. Well, following on from the Ghost Fleet Offensive, where we saw some covert missions behind enemy lines for the Colonial Fleet, it turns out that the Cylons are now losing their grip on the war. But whispers of a new super weapon reached the Colonial Fleet. The SG-75, which is the Battlestar Group, Battlestar Galactica's 75 Battle Group, embarks on a race against time to uncover the Cylon secret and prevent the annihilation of the human race and the 12 colonies. So what's it all gonna feature? So straight out, we've got eight new story-driven campaign missions that are set at the final days of the first Cylon War. Of course, we had Ghost Fleet Offensive mentioning the Adama characters and things from Blood and Chrome, which is the era of where it was actually set. Now we're getting into the final days of it, where it is the demobbing, I suppose, of the colonial fleet and the last pushes against the remnants of the Cylon. Next up is nine new resource missions, which can be used in any Season 2 campaign. All good stuff by that. And not only that, there's going to be three new music tracks by composer Ash Gibson Gregg. Hope I've pronounced that right. So this is the final chapter, and Armistice is an explosive eight-mission story campaign, right? Bringing Season 2 of Battlestar Galactica Deadlock to a thrilling conclusion. What's that close loss been on up about, right? What's he been going on about? Um, what's his plot for Dominion and take part in the legendary Operation Raptor Talon? Now, no idea what all that's about. Perhaps that's the Adama and Coca mission. Don't know. Who knows? I don't think it was, really. But we'll have to wait and see what Operation Raptor Talon is all about. So, as I mentioned, Season 2 was comprised of Battlestar Galactica Deadlock Resurrection, where we saw the rebuilding and the retrieval of the Galactica from the Sea of Caprica after the end of Season 1, and also Ghost Fleet Offensive, which saw covert missions behind enemy lines, giving it back to the Cylons, and very closely following, or should we say, sort of closely following, the themes of Battlestar Galactica, Blood and Chrome. So we're going to get a new story, eight missions, fantastic. You can get nine new resource missions, fantastic, and some new music, all aimed towards the last parts of the first Cylon War. Great, but let's address the elephant in the room. The introduction of new ships, primarily the Pegasus. Long have we had to put up with the tissue paper Minerva Battlestar, Two missile batteries, absolutely fantastic. Now we're going to get the behemoth Mercury-class Battlestar, right? The iconic modern Battlestar, the Beast, which we saw in the Ron Moore um, dramatization, televised dramatization. The pack does contain six ships of the modern era of Battlestar Galactica, but they can only be used in skirmish, multiplayer, and anabasis. For those of you wondering what Anabasis is, it's a kind of a survival mode they brought in uh, during Season 1 of Battlestar Galactica Deadlock, which sees you in a small fleet collecting additional refugees as the Cylons pushed into colonial space. So you can use them there, you can use them in skirmish, you can use them in multiplayer, but you can't use them in the story campaigns, okay? So you've got to get your multiplayer on, which is okay, you know? It's okay. In addition to this, 
Not only are we going to have the Colonial Mercury, but you're also going to have, you've guessed it, the Colonial Battlestar Valkyrie. Now this is a support Battlestar, okay? Quite smaller, 700 meters in length. We've seen it um, in the original TV series and then in the TV movies. Uh, it was Adama's command before Battlestar, he got given the Battlestar Galactica for his sins uh, due to a failed mission with the Viper pilot Bulldog where they were doing reconnaissance into Cylon space. So the Battlestar Valkyrie is a type of Battlestar that would prove very popular in the years following the first Cylon War. Its small frame is heavily armed, allowing for a highly maneuverable artillery package. So everybody wanted the Valkyrie. Now we've got it. There you go. Um, people should be happy. But they probably won't be happy because you can't use it in the campaign. But more campaigns are going to be coming. You know, there's a whole um, roadmap for Scythian games uh, and Black Lab games. Now we've all had to make do with the Mark I and Mark II Colonial Viper, and they've done a sterling job. But now we're going to get the Colonial Viper Mark VII, modern space superiority fighter, as first seen in the miniseries, which, um, let's face it, Apollo flew to Galactica, and then after that, he kind of bombed around in his own uh, Mark II uh, and his father's ship which also Starbuck kind of flew as well. So that's the colonial ships that we're going to get. In addition to that, what are we going to get on the Cylon side? The Cylon's not going to be left out, don't you worry. The Cylon modern base star command ship, the Cylon guardian base star, and the modern raider that we've seen from the Don Moore series. Um, with the modern base star, and like their predecessors, these base stars relied solely on missiles and fighter deployments for protection. These modern base stars utilize an organic hull resin which allowed structural damage to be repaired quickly. So, regenerating base star, eh? And then you've got the Cylon Guardian base star, which is a base star prototype. Although, all the way through the development of this base star is shrouded in secrecy, it is understood that it escaped Operation Raptor Talon with the prophetic um, hybrid prototype um, and a card of Centurion. So, expect that the one to be blasting in there, I would imagine, to do loads of little micro jumps around your ships and then start boarding your base stars with Centurions as well to take you out from the inside. But there's also more. There's the free daybreak update features that also come. Um, there's the ability to have photo mode where you can pause the action during your replays and capture the screenshots from the very feature-rich and graphically-rich environments that you can get within your replays. PC users can also use their flavoured captures as loading screens, so there's going to be a change to those boring old loading screens. We finally got some good ones as well in Season 2. There's also going to be, and I've been after this for ages, an increase in fleet caps. Oh my god, we're, we've gone away now, right, from what I thought at 8,000 was a hard cap to beat, right? You know, anyway, so what they're going to do is they're going to be increase the caps for fleets to 16,000 points. So that's up another 8,000 and a maximum of 10 ships for skirmish, multiplayer and operation and a basis. So no mention there, right? Of what's happening in the campaign may stay the same. You don't know. But it says the caps for fleet composition have been increased to 16,000 points and 10 ships for skirmish, multiplayer and operation and a basis. Multiplayer includes two new fleet point tiers, 12,000 and 16,000 for matches. For multiplayer enhancements, three new modes to play Battlestar Galactica Deadlock online. Uh, multi uh, multiplayer demolition in demolition mode. One fleet is tasked with destroying a critical station the other with defending it at all cost. The attacking player wins if the station is destroyed. Then you also have extraction. A refugee fleet of defectors is ambushed while their FTL drives are spooling. In extraction, the defending player wins when the last, at least one civilian ship jumps out the battle. And propaganda. Um, a satellite relay broadcast mission there, which will broadcast your political manifesto. You have to fight for control of that network. The more satellites you control, the faster your opponent counter decreases. Also included in this update, custom team colours, 
select your own personal style, a bit of modification, and more cooperative mode Cylon fleets to choose from and challenge. The fleet building improvements. Quality of life improvements to the fleet builder UI to make composing your fl epic fleets faster. An accuracy printout panel when selecting a focus fire target. Information will be displayed for any weapon that can hit that target. That would be really good. And also a pre-battle fleet list. While fighting the Cylons in any of the story mission campaigns, you can now view your fleet's list before proceeding the upcoming battle. That'll be quite interesting to see. Also, there's combat balancing, a whole host of updates and balancing changes, including, but not excluding, um, the exclusion ranges for tactical jumps, reworking of the irradiated cluster bomb and EMP mechanics, and also a subsystem repair rate boost added to defenders' tech support ability. Sounds very confusing. Mines can now be disarmed mid armament, plus many more balanced updates for Cylon and Colonial fleets. They've done a load of bug fixes and performance improvements. And this, I think, came quite out of the blue, especially with everyone working at home as well during the COVID pandemic. But I am thrilled and really stoked to get hold of this Battlestar Galactica Deadlock Armistice, the modern ships pack, um, and also take a look at the Daybreak updates. I've been Ricardo, and you've guessed it, this has been Battlestar Galactica Deadlock, the end of Season 2 breakdown of what we've found out given the recent Black Labs and Slytherin release. Can't wait to get my hands on it. Really can't wait to get my hands on it. And I'll be doing extensive gameplay videos towards the end of September when it gets released. Look out for it on Steam. Apparently it's September the 24th, 2020 that this gets released. So all good stuff. We should have this all done and dusted by the time other games we're looking forward are coming out. Like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Check back for more videos in the series and check out the Battlestar Galactica Deadlock videos on the channel. See you soon. So say we all.